This next activity that I'm going to perform is one in which I do it in the unit on chemical reactions. And what makes it fun for the students is that it involves a toy. And that item is known as the bomb bag. Now maybe some of your students will have already seen this item because you can buy them at gag stores. But what I do with my students is I have them actually activate it. Now for today, we're going to do this on top of the demonstration tray. With my students, I would have them activate it and stand around at various sinks in the room in small groups and actually observe it there. But uh, we'll do it right now so that you can see. You s the directions are squeeze it up. We'll do a couple of them. And then I will stand back. <laughs> Interestingly enough, they don't always explode at the same moment. Or sometimes it doesn't explode, and you don't know if it's going to explode or if the bomb, has, bomb bag has a leak. So <laughs> for some people, they have a lot of difficulty with that. Now, let's, uh, let's just look at what's left up here. We notice that there is a, uh, a small packet with some liquid. And the inside of the bag, we can see that there is some solid left in there. And of course, we can see that kind of sprayed all around the lab bench here. Now, it's interesting to note that some of these bomb bags actually tell you what's in them. And then the latest ones, and this is one of those latest ones, do not list the ingredients. And I guess the idea is they don't want people to be able to duplicate this on their own. But uh, I eventually have to tell my students what the ingredients are. We're going to go over to the chalkboard and we're going to look at the chemical reaction that is involved. One of the ingredients is sodium bicarbonate, simply baking soda. The other ingredient, and this is a formula that would not be really familiar to my students, but this is citric acid. The name, of course, is common to them, but not the formula. And when these two are reacted, we do get some water. The gas is carbon dioxide, and then we get sodium citrate. Now, you can have the students balance the equation. Uh, you can have the students figure out what the gas is by perhaps simulating that reaction in a Ziploc bag and using a burning splint and watching this burning splint be extinguished. But what I want to do is focus on how can we determine what's where in the bag. So knowing that we have sodium bicarbonate and knowing that we have citric acid to make this reaction happen, and there was a little packet of water, so we know water of some type is involved, let's have the students do an experiment. Now I'm going to come back and show you what I would do with my students on this experiment, but I want to point out that my students, if they are doing the experiment, are going to use a 24 well plate because this is probably the most common piece of equipment that students would have as far as small scale reactions. For today, we're going to look at it in a six well plate because that's a little bit easier to see here. With our six well plate, I'm going to place it a white background because this will make our reactions easier to see. Now, let's just take one of the bomb bags here and I'm going to cut it open. And when I reach into the bomb bag, one of the things I pull out is a little packet that the bag describes as magic water. Now, is it water? Does it uh, have citric acid dissolved in it? Does it have baking soda dissolved in it? Does it have some combination of those? So what I'm going to do is cut open the packet, and I'm going to put some into the well plate, and then we're going to compare it and find out just what the nature is of our magic water. So we'll pour some in here. Now, of course, what would be the common thing to compare it with? Some distilled water. Now, right now, of course, everything is clear and colorless. But what we're going to do eventually is add some universal indicator. So we have our magic water 
and we have distilled water. So let's check out what happens with universal indicator. Our magic water obviously turns red. Distilled water here has a green tone. So pretty much ruling out that the magic water is water. So what is in it? Well, remember, citric acid and baking soda are the two substances that are involved here. So we're going to take and put some baking soda into one of these wells. And we're going to put some citric acid into another well. And we're going to add some water to each of these wells. And stir them. And now let's add the universal indicator. Now remember, this was our baking soda, not a match. But this is our citric acid. And so the magic water apparently is citric acid dissolved in water. All right, now in our bomb bag, we also have some solid left over. And what we're going to do is test that solid and see, is the solid just one of the solids that are written on the board. So what I'm going to do here is put some of the bomb bag solid, which you can see is a white solid. We're going to put that in there. And is it a mixture? Well, if it were a mixture of those two, sodium bicarbonate and citric acid, if I simply add regular water to it, I should get a gas. And now let's take and add the same bomb bag solid. Only this time, let's add some baking soda. And add some water. Not much seems to be happening there. And the reason we're doing this is to see if that white solid happens to be citric acid. If I added baking soda and water, I should get fizzing. If the solid itself had a mixture, I should get fizzing with just plain water. So now let's add some baking soda. I'm sorry, let's add some bomb bag solid. And let's add some citric acid. And let's add water to that. And when we do that, we notice that we get all the bubbling. So what that tells us is that our white solid is just baking soda. But we do need the three components. That is, we do need baking soda and citric acid. And we do need that liquid to bring them together to react. And so this is a way for the students to analyze something that's very common in terms of toys nowadays, and also to use a lot of thinking skills with this. Now, you can take and extrapolate this one step further, because it was relatively recently that I discovered that there's an item on the market known as a magic balloon or a self-inflating balloon. And so I want to show you what this entails. And uh, what we've got here, I love you here. This is nice. And uh, what it tells you to do on this is very much like the way it tells you to react the bomb bag. It tells you to squeeze some inner packet in there and shake it up, just like we did the mom bag, but never fear, this is not supposed to explode. It's supposed to just give us a self-inflating balloon. What's interesting to note, too, is if you feel the solution as it's happening, it's an exothermic reaction when the baking soda dissolves in water. And so there's a bit of a temperature change, so it takes a while for this maybe to inflate. And then, of course, you have the little handle with the ribbon on it here, so that you can uh, click this together. And uh, you end up with your cute little balloon. All right? Now, 
With my second year students, what I did was I gave them, because they'd already done the bomb bag in first year chemistry, so I gave them these self-inflating balloons. And what I told them was that I wanted them to take the balloon and I wanted them to figure out what was inside of it. And of course, they've had this reaction back in their repertoire. But I told them I didn't want them to inflate one because we've got that one going right now. But I told them I wanted them to cannibalize the balloon. So they cut it open and is that one going to explode? I don't think so. And uh, cut it open so that they can reach inside here. And uh, what we've got also is a little packet of water. All right? And then I have them analyze this. And there's also a white solid. So we'll just cut this all the way open. But with my students, they would be dumping out the white solid because they have to figure out the volume of the balloon. But anyhow, they can see that there's a white solid in here. So, with my second year students now, they're going to have to do some stoichiometry. And what I do, first of all, is have them analyze to see what's where. And that is, again, they discover that, yes, that is baking soda. And, uh, yes, that is citric acid in the magic water. But then they take a fresh balloon and uh, they measure the baking soda mass. And they measure the volume of the balloon after they've cut it open. And they do some stoichiometry. In other words, how much baking soda would it take with the appropriate amount of citric acid to inflate the balloon at whatever the room conditions are for that day? So what are they using? Ideal gas law as well as stoichiometry. Now, with the students, the whole idea is that they inflate the balloon and not blow one up. So they would also determine what the mass is of citric acid it would take but in the case of the baking soda, they'd find out, is the baking soda in excess or is it the limiting reagent? And then what I would do is say, now take that information, now that you've figured out which one you want to use as the limiting reagent and which one you want to use as the excess reagent. And then I would say, okay, I'm going to give you a Ziploc bag. Now, you have to have a pretty sturdy Ziploc bag to do this, right? It's just not your little snack bag. Um, for your lunch snacks. This is a little bit thicker mill. And so I give them this bag and I say, okay, here's your charge. You're going to take baking soda and you're going to take citric acid and you're going to react them to fill this bag so it would be like a balloon and to fill it so that it doesn't explode but that it does fill it. So what are they going to have to do? They're gonna to have to measure the volume of the bag and then they're going to have to determine, again, at the conditions of the room, what would be the stoichiometry to get this bag to fill up with carbon dioxide without exploding it. And with the students, what I have them do is I say, all right, how are you going to get that water and that packet in there, right? Because remember, you had to squeeze the packet. So what I do for them is I give them, well, actually, I give them a very long pipette, one of these jumbo pipettes, and I have them cut it off so that this is gonna be their magic packet of water. Now, granted, it's open. So what they're going to do is mix up what they think are their right, appropriate amounts of the two solids, and then put some water into this, and then slip it into the bag very carefully, seal it up, and then they're going to shake it up. And voila, they'll get their magic balloon. Now. Before they get to the point where they actually are going to mix all of this, I tell them to decorate their balloons, right? And so we give them some uh, permanent markers and do that. Now, obviously, the balloon's going to be see-through, and it's going to have this little pipette in there. And then what I do is I tell them to take the remaining little plastic holder and clip that on the bottle, bottom to make their balloon. And so I made one beforehand here to show you. And of course, in keeping with the kind of motif that I would see with my students, I've got I heart Flynn on my balloon. Now, believe it or not, my students actually do things like put down I heart chemistry, all right? But then they decorate it with various pieces of chemistry equipment. And we put those up on display and see who can come up with the most colorful one. So, like I said, 
This is something, the balloon part, I do with my second year class because they've already seen the bomb bag. But it allows them to apply the stoichiometry. First year class, they're doing analysis. And just this past school year, I decided to use that analysis part as part of their final instead of putting it in chemical reactions. And that was a pretty successful venture, too. So you have opportunities of where you can use that, but it's a very colorful reaction. And like I said, anytime you can bring in something that is kind of a toy item, you're going to really hook their attention.